Welcome back to Midnight Machine Shop. I'm Matt. Today's project is to get the fuel injection pump reinstalled in this Humvee and try to start the engine. With the injection pump back from the rebuilder, let's take a look at what they did. So it was a rebuild and then there was actually a bunch of additional parts needed. That's a lot more than what I would have done with just trying to replace the plunger and advance and everything and all that work would have been for nothing. So let's get this thing open. Before I sent it out for rebuild, I put some marks on it using layout die so that I would know the position of the throttle position sensor. So I'm going to line that up. Now it's going to be just an initial starting point. I might have to adjust it later. There's actually holes on here, so if you need to adjust the pump, you can put a special wrench in there. Well, I don't have that wrench, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this note card and just make indents in the back. And that way it'll give me the hole spacing so I can figure out what the wrench needs to be if I do need to make one. Before I put the injector in, I'm going to make sure to clean out the sealing surface that the copper crush washer goes on. Now I'm not going to go totally nuts with this little dental pick, but just enough to kind of clean off the surface or get any big whatever chunks of carbon. And then I've got the air hose down there. We've reached the point where it's time to install the injectors. So from Delphi, or what used to be AC Delco, and there's an injector installation kit. It comes with the new fuel return hoses, as well as the copper crush washers and the caps. These other gaskets and stuff aren't used. For the injectors themselves, I was able to locate a company that had surplus brand new standardine injectors, and I'm going to use those instead of putting the old ones back. I have no idea what the condition of the old ones are, but these ones are brand new. From the kit, I've got the copper crush washer. I'm going to put some anti-seize on the threads of the injector, being careful not to get it like where the crush washer goes. When I noticed when I was taking the old ones out that they were pretty tight in there. So I got the injector, the copper crush washer, and now I'm going to feed it in, being careful to not lose the crush washer off of the nose of the injector. Now that it's in place, I've got the special injector socket. It's actually from Snap-on. I can now tighten the injector to its proper torque, which is in the tech manual. So from this point onward, I'm just gonna work my way down the line, pulling the little paper plug that I had in there, cleaning the pocket out, and then installing the injector. If one of them is majorly different or requires some special setup, I'll put that on the video. But otherwise, this is all, like I said, straight out of the maintenance manual. Before I put in number one injector, I'm actually going to put the fuel return hose on because this gives me a lot more room to do it. That once I have the injector in place and everything, I won't be able to reach my hand in here. I could take out the generator. I don't want to because it's super heavy. So I'm going to try to fit the hose in this way. And then once I have it in place, I can just connect it. And that's what the final result looks like now that I have it in place. So now comes the moment of truth. We're going to get the injection pump back in. So I went ahead and I lined up as best I could by eye the position of the locating pin and the notch that's in the pump gear inside the housing. So inside there, I can see the pin in the slot on the pump drive gear and I can see that it's the pump is engaged with the gear fully and the little spring-loaded plunger is right there. On the injection pump there's a line scribed into it and then there's another one actually on the timing housing and that's used to basically time the pump in relation to where the pistons are when they reach top dead center. Before I took the pump off these two are in a line. So I'm going to put it in the exact same spot. The pump retaining bolt on the left side is a little bit of a special case because the bracket that holds the throttle cable is over here too. So I'm going to put a bolt in kind of loose in the injection pump and bracket just so I can have that lined up and then I'm going to put the nut on. The other interesting thing about this is that there's actually no torque value in the army maintenance manual. 
And I'm guessing part of that is because it's pretty difficult to actually get any torque wrench or anything else in here. Then go the throttle cable bracket bolts. There's two of those. And going into aluminum, you're going to have to go nuts with it. That, uh, no sense stripping out the threads of the injection pump. Using just a standard thread die, well it's actually a metric thread die, I'm going to clean out the threads of any leftover thread locker or other stuff that's in them. Now I'm not actually cutting thread, I'm just getting the goop out of it. Once it reaches the end point, just back it all off. So the toilet paper tube trick is just taking a section of cut off toilet paper tube and inserting it in the hole. That way, if I drop the bolt, the bolt gets caught by the toilet paper tube. I did the exact same thing when I took it apart. And it keeps the bolt from going into the timing cover or worse, down into the oil pan. I'm gonna slide one bolt in. I've got the torque wrench set. All the values for this are in the technical manual that is available online for the entire world. So to get to the other two injection pump bolts, you actually have to rotate the crank. Now you can do it by the balancer, or in this case, I use the bolt on the generator and I can feel the next hole coming around. I can't quite reach it yet. So that's the next bolt hole for the pump gear on the injection pump. To make this happen with a three inch extension, I have to take the belt loose. But if I take a three ace to half inch, half inch to three ace, I wind up with an extension that's shorter. With that shorter extension, I can get it in place without having to take the belt loose. And then switch over to the torque wrench to get it torqued. So the next step is actually getting the fuel return hoses onto each injector. Now, this is the Delphi kit, and it no longer uses the little metal clips. So I'm gonna try that out. I have no idea if that's gonna work or what the deal is gonna be. I kind of pre-lubricated each end of the hose with just dipping it in diesel. That way I'm not just trying to slide a dry line onto the fitting. The lines are actually a lot longer than the originals. They're probably good at least two inches, if not two and a half longer. On the new injectors, they came with this little cap in the shipping box. What I did is I cut it down. So now I can take that cap and I can put it over the exposed inlet for the injector and that'll keep dirt and stuff from getting into it while I work on this. The one change I am gonna make on this hose that going from number three to number one injector is I did cut it down. And the reason why is that as it was bent and making its loop from one injector to the other, it got dangerously close to the fan on the generator. And the only thing that's gonna happen there, it's gonna just wear a hole in it. And that's gonna be a bad day for everybody. Next is the installation of the fuel return line from the injection pump. It's standard quarter inch diameter fuel hose. Again, lubricate the hose with some diesel fuel before installing it and it goes a lot easier. I'm just reusing the standard clamps that came with it. They work just fine. So it's a matter of orienting them so you can slide them down into place. Before I put the injection lines back on, I took a quick look at them and they got a problem. So right here on the ceiling surface, the prior maintenance had crushed this so bad it actually left a shoulder. I'm guessing that it was a situation where these were the only lines they had, they didn't have a replacement, and they needed to make them stop leaking, and they just tightened them down until it stopped. So I actually managed to find brand new lines. This is a nice conical surface, rather than the one that has a step into it from being crushed. The injector lines normally install in pairs, 
But since I have them free, I'm going to do them one at a time. But I'm still going to do them as a pair. So I'm going to do one and then three. I actually went ahead and I put a tiny amount of anti-seize on each fitting. Because when I went to take these apart, they were tightened. And like I said, I'm guessing that part of it was that they leaked and they just got tightened down to no end to stop them from leaking. So this will be injector line for cylinder number three going in. And on each of the lines, there's a plastic clip that kind of ties them together. And I'm just taking that one off of the old set of lines and clipping it on the new one. Then this will be the second clamp. Start tightening the fittings. Here on the passenger side, I'm doing things a little bit differently. Since I have the lines separate and not as pairs, I'm actually putting them in in an order that makes it easier to get to the fittings. That way I can start at the bottom when less lines are in place. And then I'll go through and put the clamps and other stuff on, not the clamps. Then I'll go back through and I'll install the supports, the little plastic clips that go on each line. By doing the lines slightly out of order, it lets me have room enough to get the crow's foot in there. I cleaned up and painted this fuel filter housing. Now I'm actually going to take it apart and get the fuel filter and water separator out. I am wearing gloves just in case there's fuel still in this thing because I don't want to smell like diesel. You can see some dirt and stuff at the bottom. And then, whatever the heck that is, it's squishy and gross. So that's something that came through the fuel system and got stopped by the filter. And there's a bunch of dirt in there too. Sprayed out the housing with brake clean. Now I'm just going to take a shop towel and wipe out the inside and just get the residue out. Got the new filter. And comes in a sealed plastic bag. That makes sense. And there's a little bit of instructions. Do not discard separator. Well, I am, because I've got a new separator too. Clean out dirt prior to installation of element E and separator F. Install new element E and reinsert separator. So, new element. Goes in. And this is the new separator. I guess the o-ring goes there. And that goes back on top. And then the screws go back in and just get tightened down. So it's just a matter of putting it back into place. I'll have to run on the inside to get the bolts in. On each of these bolts, I'm putting a small amount of anti-seize. That way, it, instead of causing a problem for future me, it helps future me out. Now that I'm back under the hood, I can plug the fuel pressure sensor back in. I'm going to put a tiny bit of dielectric grease in there just to help with the seal and keep corrosion out of the pins. It's kind of weird. The, uh, the sensor is only used by the military standard test equipment, which I don't have. So it's kind of worthless for me personally. Now the fuel filter's in, I'll put the water and diesel drain line on. I've already got it attached to the valve end. Now it's just getting it in place here. In goes the fuel line going to the injection pump, I'm making sure I have it routed the way I want it and have the clamps on the line before putting it on the fittings. 
I made sure to lubricate the hose with some diesel fuel so that it slides onto the fitting easier. So making sure I have the hose lined the way I want, I'll now slide it onto the fitting on the injection pump. To be able to see what's going on when I first start it, I temporarily installed this clear inline fuel filter between the lift pump and the standard fuel filter. That way I can see the fuel condition and if the lift pump's doing its job. The throttle cable goes back into place. Next, it's uh, 11 16 jam nuts. Be sure to get one washer on the top side and one lock washer on the bottom side. Otherwise it's gonna go in all crooked. Cable attached, now comes the little clip that holds the cable to the throttle linkage. Try not to lose it. It just goes in like that. And check for free operation. Because I don't want to run down the batteries cranking this thing to prime the fuel system, what I've done is connected fuel hose to the fuel pump, to an electric pump, and then to five gallons of diesel in a fuel can. I'm going to run that off of this 12 volt power supply, which has enough amperage to do the job. I've got fuel all the way up the lines and into the secondary fuel filter that I put in. Doing it with the electric pump allows me to find things like fuel leaks. So I've already found one where the rubber hose goes into a fitting and that fitting goes into the injection pump. So with the intake knot in place, it should be easy to tighten that line back up and get rid of that leak. With the shop vac, I'm gonna vacuum the intake ports while I pull a paper towel out that's been plugging them so that way stuff doesn't drop into the engine. Okay, the batteries are reconnected. Let's give her a crank and see what happens if we get some fuel moving through the system. So I had left number two injector cracked and I've got fuel there, so I'm gonna tighten it back down so that line's bled. When fuel comes out of each injector line, it means that the air's been bled out. So fork it back down and then move on to the next one. After applying some anti-seize to the threads of the glow plugs, I can stick the glow plugs back in. And then just repeat the process seven more times. The torque spec's only a 10 foot pounds or 120 inch pounds. So don't go crazy. To keep moisture out and everything else, I've put a little dielectric grease inside the glow plug boots, mostly just to keep the rubber flexible so that if I go to remove it, it's not so much stuck on the glow plug. Uh, wait light. Wait light comes on. My biggest concern was getting the engine running and if it had good oil pressure, which it did. In the next video, I'll start the rest of the reassembly.